welcome back students we will continue with nucleic acid we discussed about building block of nucleic acid nucleotide now we discuss how each nucleotide binds to the next one by ex extending the chain to form a polynucleotide so we already discussed about the structure of a complete nucleotide a pentose sugar with a purine or a pyrimidine with mc bond glycosidic bond we discussed about ester bond between the phosphate group and the fifth carbon of the pentose sugar so co ester bond by elimination of water between the two now the same way this is the next nucleotide pentose sugar purine and the phosphate group we are going to talk how these two nucleotides are linked that is how the chain extends always from 5 to 3 direction but remember the bond occurs between the third carbon of the first sugar and the fifth carbon of the next sugar through a phosphate group that means phosphate is the connecting link between two adjacent nucleotides as the chain grows so if we take this nucleotide it already has one ester bond here so the previous nucleotide when it is connecting to this nucleotide makes another ester bond between the other hydroxyl group of the phosphate and the third hydroxyl group at the third carbon okay so that becomes the second ester bond so first ester bond already there in the nucleotide and the second ester bond connecting the first nucleotide to the second so that becomes a diester bond phospho diester bond remember the chain grows in 5 to 3 direction only polymerase enzyme works in 5 to 3 prime direction only but we call the phospho diester bond as 3 prime to 5 prime phospho diester bond because of the first nucleotide third carbon the free hydroxyl group forms the ester bond with the phosphate group and that bond makes the ester bond with the next pentose sugar fifth carbon hydroxyl group at the fifth carbon okay so the co bond ester bond is formed by elimination of water here so during one phospho diester bond formation two molecules of water is eliminated so likewise the chain goes on growing so this is the first base second base third base that means this is first nucleotide second nucleotide third nucleotide phospho diester bond between each okay so that is how it grows now uh, whether dna or rna the same way the polynucleotide chain is formed structure of dna if we specifically talk about definitely dna is double stranded uh, normal biological dna is all double stranded so we talk about the other strand one strand forms in 5 to 3 the other form other form in 5 to 3 but it is 3 to 5 when you see the polarity of the two at a time so we call it anti parallel polarity of the double helix it is helical of course helical just like a spiral ladder if you see then uh, the two Uh, railings of the ladder that is this uh, backbone called sugar phosphate backbone see sugar phosphate sugar phosphate sugar like that it goes every time you see the number of sugar and the number of phosphate groups would always be the same in a polynucleotide chain so sugar phosphate sugar phosphate sugar like that it goes the two railings or this sugar phosphate backbone are connected by hydrogen bonds between their bases the nucleotide bases are connected by hydrogen bond just like in a ladder if you see the rungs of the ladder how you stamp where you stamp and climb up this bases bond with the hydrogen bonding gives that rungs like shape of the ladder okay now coming to the helix this is how it goes but the distance between the bases as it, it is shown here it's not like that it is not clashing over the distance between the bases is always uniform due to the base pairing nature we come to watson and crick model of dna double helix what all watson and crick proposed uh, the features of dna as proposed by them it's a large molecule a polymer double stranded helical molecule we have just opened up here to show the bases in between anti parallel polarity we already discussed so anti definitely against okay 5 to 3 going this is going against 3 to 5 but remember it always forms 5 to 3 only okay the polymerization occurs in 5 to 3 only 
Now that is anti parallel. Actually, the word parallel is the distance between the bases is uniform. Though pyrimidine is one ring, purine is two ring, and they may be anywhere randomly, but still, you see, if it is at, at one place it is pyrimidine, the other place it is purine. So here, it, if it is purine, here it is pyrimidine. So always purine pairs with pyrimidine. So the distance between the two uh, remains same throughout the length of the chain. So base pairing always between purine and pyrimidine. Then adenine always binds to thymine only with hydrogen bond double and guanine with cytosine triple hydrogen bond. Definitely triple bond is stronger. And this base pairing renders stability to the polynucleotide chain. The, the DNA double helix is stable because of such bonding. Uh, the two strands are complementary to each other. That is mainly because of base pairing. They complement each other. One is incomplete without the other. So adenine is there in a double strand. Opposite thymine should be there. Guanine is there. Cytosine is there. That is how they complement. So the two chains are complementary to each other. Then another important thing is the bases are arranged. If you see on a plane, on, a, on their plane surface, the way they are stacked. Just like how you keep your books one over the other. You keep one smaller book in between. Doesn't matter. You can keep a bigger book, a bigger book, a smaller book, but it will stack up. It, will, it won't fall. The reason here is the base pairing. When they are stacked even with not same shape or structure or occupying the same shape, still they don't fall because of hydrogen bonding between them and they appear like stacked one over the other, just like how you arrange books one over the other. So that confers additional stability to the DNA double helix. So that way uniform distance between the two strands of the helix because purine always pairs with pyrimidine so distance would always be same. Then length of the DNA is measured in base pairs. For example if I talk about this this is four base pair long DNA I have taken. Okay one pair two nucleotides two nucleotides two one pair is two nucleotides or in kilo base pairs. Haploid human genome is found to be 3.3 to 10 raised to the power 9 base pairs approximately. So that is how. Now suppose a question comes, you are given one strand of DNA. You know DNA is a blueprint of life. It has all the genetic information to carry on life. The sequence is written in 5 to 3 direction always. So for example, in the exam you get a direction of 5 to 3 sequence T A G C. You are asked to write what would be the sequence of the opposite strand or the complementary strand. Very simple. You can make T A G C show one just one line. You opposite to T always A A T. So you have A T C G, but you are writing in three to five. Suppose the question says write in five to three polarity only. You make this arrangement in a showing a simple line, and then you write the answer. The opposite strand is the complementary strand is five prime G C T A three prime. Like that you should write. Clear. Okay, base pairing was also uh, confirmed by Erwin Cherga. According to him, he had proposed, he had an isolated and analyzed quantity of bases in DNA by hydrolyzing those bases. He found that in any species, adenine is always equal to thymine and guanine is always equal to cy uh, cytosine in terms of mole equivalence in double-stranded DNA. This holds true for all double-stranded DNA, whether linear or uh, plasmid, which is circular this holds true. Uh, exceptions are single stranded DNA. Single stranded DNA don't have base pairing so there cannot be mole equivalent uh, you know un, uh, equal amount of uh, purine and pyrimidine cannot be talked there. Double stranded RNA if at all occurs like for example we talked in RNA interference double stranded RNA and all even there this will show. He proposed that purines is always equivalent to equal in amount to pyrimidines and he called this base equivalence rule. Quantitatively, purine upon pyrimidine is equal to 1. That means it completes 100%. A is always equal to T. So, A by T value will be 1. G, C is always equal to G. So, C by G value will be 1. A plus G is always equal to C plus T. If at all you are talking about a double stranded RNA, this will become U. Wherever T is there, it is U. Okay, we will also talk in one of the videos why thiamine in the DNA and uracilin RNA. Okay, now if there is a question, see this formula can be used for so solving so many type of questions. I will discuss a few here. 
double standard DNA uh, given that cytosine is 20%. Calculate percentage of adenine. So very simple. We know cytosine is equal to guanine. So C is equal to G. So guanine is also 20%. For total 40. Out of 100%, what is remaining? 60%. We know A is equal to T. So take it as 2A. So 60, 100 minus 40, 60% is 2A. So A is 60 by 2, 30%. Simple. Another a little advanced question can be, you are given amount of T in a double standard DNA of length 2000 base pair. Here length of the DNA is given. 2000 base pair will be 4000 bases. One base pair is two nucleotides. So 2000 base pair is, base pair is 4000 bases. So you have to calculate that first. Then the same way you find out the C, amount of C. Percentage is given, you find out the amount of C. Then suppose you get, uh, you have to find out the amount of C. So first you find the percentage of C, suppose 50% or 40%, suppose 40%. Then 40 by 100 into 4000. So very simple, just try that. Another type of question can be to find out, for example, in bioinformatics and all, find out uh, a given DNA strand, find out is it GC rich or AT rich. What, what kind of DNA is it? So you have to calculate it. So if it is G plus C coming more than A plus T, so it is GC rich. Generally prokaryotes are GC rich. DNA of prokaryotes. If G plus C you calculate, you can calculate here. Is less than A, A plus T, it becomes AT rich. Like that, eukaryotes are mostly AT rich. Now, some more salient features of double helix DNA, we will see. Uh, major and minor groups, what are they? See, when you see a helix, uh, see the area where the two backbones are far apart. You know, the two sugar phosphate backbones are far apart. Like this here, here. So that is major group. Whereas where they are closer, see the closer area of the backbone, they are minor groups. Okay. Then, what is a pitch? The height of one complete helix turn. One complete helix turn. That is, this is one turn. Then, this is the next turn. So, that makes one pitch. It could be from a major groove to a major groove. Or, it could be from a minor groove to a minor groove. So, this turn should be correct. Full 360 degree turn. That makes one pitch. And, that one pitch generally has approximately, not approximately, roughly around 10 base pairs. So, 10 base pairs make up one pitch. Uh, roughly because, see, these are molecules. So, you have to imagine the size of the molecule. It may go a little beyond that specified uh, place, you know, groove. So, and around 10 base pairs. So, a distance of 3 point, the pitch has a distance. One pitch has a distance of 3.4 nanometer. You convert it into Armstrong, 34 Armstrong. Then, one pitch, 10 base pairs. So, what is the distance between two Two base pairs. So 3.4 nanometer divided by 10. So you get 0.34 nanometer is the distance between each two base pairs. Okay, that is easy. Then the two new last but not the least feature, there are so many things we will discuss in the next video. Uh, the two nucleotide chains, polynucleotide chains are twisted into a helix. You know what is a helix now? And the distance between the two helix is 2 nanometers. See here, 2 nanometers. And it is always coiled in a right-handed fashion. What is it right-handed fashion? This way. It goes on this way. Then again it goes on this way. That is right-handed. You keep the uh, uh, two ropes tied together, coiled one over the other, uh, slightly away from you. And you see if it goes that right pattern, right. Okay. That is a right-handed helix. That is how it goes. So that is all for now. Um, have a good reading. Keep learning. And in the next video, I will come up with some more uh, things about RNA and DNA, both comparison. And one important thing, why RNA has uracil and how has DNA evolved to have thiamine. thiamine. So that we will discuss. Uh, okay, have a good day. Hope you understood the topic. If you liked, please subscribe. And you can write any doubt in the comment box or you can ask me if you know me.